Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news at 6 on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. 24 people arrested in connection with Tuesday's violence in uh, Saranpur. Four-member team led by State Home Secretary tasked with monitoring the law and order situation in the area. Tested and certified copies of documents to be available online for Indians travelling abroad. External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj launches eSanad, a web portal to deposit academic and job certificates. Nepal Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel Prachanda resigns under the power sharing understanding with the ruling partner Nepali Congress, announces resignation and address to nation. And two days after the Manchester suicide attack, Britain raises its security alert level. UK Prime Minister Theresa May warns that more such attacks could be imminent. The Uttar Pradesh government removed two senior Saranpur officials on Wednesday, a day after the caste clashes in the western UP town. Saranpur Senior Superintendent of Police Subhash Chandra Dubey and District Magistrate N.P. Singh have been suspended. One person was killed and scores injured in the clash that broke out on Tuesday when some unidentified persons set fire to at least 12 houses ahead of the arrival of BSP Chief Mayawati. 24 people have been arrested so far even as the probe is on. The Uttar Pradesh government has announced 15 lakh rupees as compensation to the family of the man killed in the violence. The injured will be given 50,000 rupees each as compensation. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has said that those orchestrating violence will not be spared. A four-member team led by the Home Secretary are monitoring the law and order situation. Three FIR, because yesterday three crimes were committed. Three FIR has been charged. In addition, if any person is accused of any crime, he is not guilty. If he is charged with this crime, he can be charged. 24 लोग गिरफ्तार किए गए हैं ये आइडेंटिफाइड उपद्रवी हैं अभी हम लोग और भी उपद्रवियों को आइडेंटिफाई कर रहे हैं अपनी राजनीतिक रोटियां सेकने के लिए बहन मायावती जी वहां गई और उसके बाद फिर एक नौजवान की वहां हत्या हुई है और कुछ लोग घायल भी हुए हैं माननीय मुख्यमंत्री जी ने गहरी संवेदना परिवारों के प्रति प्रकट की है और दुख भी प्रकट किया है और इसमें जो लोग दोषी हैं उनके खिलाफ सख्त कार्रवाई होगी एक तरफ प्रधानमंत्री जी दलित उत्थान की बात करते हैं दलितों के भाजपा के लोगों को भेज रहे हैं दूसरी तरफ दलितों के खिलाफ अन्याय हो रहा है तो इसको अगर नहीं रोका गया तो समाजवादी पार्टी सड़कों पर उतरेगी दलितों की रक्षा के लिए समाजवादी पार्टी हर कदम उठाए द प्रेजेंट डिस्पेंसेशन ऑफ द बीजेपी गवर्नमेंट इन यूपी एंड इन कंट्री इज very desensitized to these issues. They are trying to suppress the rising consciousness of the people who are demanding equality, justice, and who want to live with dignity in this country. The situation in Saranpur is going completely out of hand. The state government is unable to either maintain law and order, and the worst part is this, these atrocities in Dalits and minorities are happening in front of the eyes of the police. Police is obviously under instructions not to intervene and protect the innocents. This is something unacceptable. Well, Indian nationals going abroad to study or secure a job will find things getting much easier now with the External Affairs Ministry's new program, eSanad. Uh, they can deposit their attested certificates with the portal that can be accessed from anywhere that they want. Any country will be able to verify the academic credentials online too. yet another convenient facility for the global Indian. On Wednesday, External Affairs Minister Shishma Swaraj launched eSanad, a database that will store all your educational degrees from matriculation to PhD. These verified and attested certificates will be valid all over the world. All universities have uploaded data, CBSC has uploaded data, so that when the child has put their certificate, then the university has come from पढ़कर आया है जो सीबीएसई के उससे पढ़कर आया है बोर्ड से उसको वो प्रमाणित कर सकें 
तो उनका ठीक है अपन सीबीएसई से तो तुरंत शुरू करते हैं पायलट प्रोजेक्ट अपन सीबीएसई से करेंगे बाकी यूनिवर्सिटीज के लिए मैं नेशनल डिपॉजिटरी बना रहा हूं उसमें भी डेटा आ जाएगा और मैं आज कहना चाहूंगी कि जो उत्साह सीबीएसई के लोगों ने दिखाया उसमें केवल मंत्री के निर्देश के कारण वो नहीं हो सकता This is the first phase of ISANAD which will store data of CBSE students later phases will include other state boards and universities users have to make a payment online to use the facility ki sachmuch mein main personally bhi aapko dhanyawad deta hu ki aapne aisi ek suvidha taiyar ki ki ab na parents ko na chhatro ko aisi daud dhup karni padegi aur isliye ye वेरिफिकेशन ट्रांसक्रिप्ट अपोस्टल अलग अलग काम के लिए अलग अलग शब्दों का उपयोग है लेकिन मात्र एक ही है कि प्रामाणिक दस्तावेज मिले और उसकी किसी ने किसी ने प्रामाणिकता की मोहर लगनी चाहिए और वो इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली यहाँ हो रहा है ईसानद वॉज डेवलप्ड बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड इट्स यूनिट नेशनल इन्फॉर्मेटिक सेंटर In the future it will be associated with skill certification units to benefit workers trained by ITIs or other institutes. So is attestation ke process mein common service center ko aap jode taki koi fitter koi bijli wala wo bhi agar apne middle east jane ke liye ya africa jane ke liye apne certificate ko attest karana chahta ho to unki sevaon se garibon ko yash milega aapke vibhag ka vistar bhi hoga Sushma ji ke bare mein kya kaha jaye hum log ki didi hain हम लोग स्नेह से कहते हैं उनको और उनके मार्गदर्शन में काफी काम किया है अमंग द स्टेट्स द तेलंगाना गवर्नमेंट इज टेकिंग द लीड फॉर द पायलट प्रोजेक्ट व्हिच इज इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद ई मदद एंड ई माइग्रेट बोथ वेयर अर्लियर प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स कमिंग इन द वेक ऑफ सिंपलीफाइड प्रोसीजर्स फॉर ऑब्टेनिंग पासपोर्ट्स द न्यू फैसिलिटी विल बी अनदर ब्लेसिंग फॉर इंडियंस गोइंग अब्रॉड ऑल डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज हैव सच टाइप ऑफ अरेंजमेंट फॉर सर्टिफिकेशन एंड अटेस्टेशन नाउ once india has launched this it has connected india with the world and also india with other parts of india akhilesh suman for rajsabha television with camera person prashanta in delhi well, the aam aadmi party on wednesday met election commission officials for discussion and uh, clarifications regarding the evm challenge the party has raised questions on the reliability of evms the meeting comes after the poll panel invited seven national and 49 state parties to participate in the challenge to prove that evms cannot be hacked the challenge begins on june 3rd several parties have alleged that evms were tampered with in the recently held assembly polls in the five states and the delhi civic polls the parties also urged the poll body to revert to the paper ballot system जो बात बताई गई चुनाव आयोग की तरफ से उससे तो ऐसा लगता है कि ईवीएम मशीन दिखाई जाएगी ईवीएम मशीन को आप देख सकते हैं लेकिन किसी भी प्रकार का कोई टूल्स इस्तेमाल नहीं कर सकते किसी भी प्रकार से आप ईवीएम को अपने डिवाइस से अपने टूल्स से चेक नहीं कर सकते तो इसका मतलब तो ये सिर्फ एक ईवीएम का डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन टाइप का होगा जैसे अब तक चुनाव आयोग करता आया है Hello, no one night counter insurgency operation was called off in Pulawama after militants escaped from the security forces cordon. The encounter broke out yesterday between security forces and militants in Hakripora area of Pulawama district in South Kashmir after a tip off about the presence of militants in the area. Meanwhile in a tit for tat move Pakistani army released an 87 second video showing heavy damage caused to the Indian military posts across the line of control the video comes a day after the Indian army released a clip of punitive fire assaults on Pakistani camps releasing the video a Pakistan army spokesperson also alleged that Indian army had targeted innocent civilians earlier this month Well, here's a roundup of the other uh, news from across the country in nationwide. 21 pilgrims from Madhya Pradesh were killed when a bus they were traveling in fell into Bhagirathi River near Nallupani on Tuesday. They were returning from the Gangotri shrine in the Himalayas. Rescue efforts by the SDRF, the ITBP and police personnel continued through the night and on Wednesday morning. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan announced an expatriation of 2 lakh rupees each to the next of kin of the deceased.
Tamilnadu Chief Minister E. Panani Swami met Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the national capital. The Chief Minister also handed over a memorandum to the Prime Minister, including the proposal to exempt the state from the NEET exam. Panani Swami uh, also invited Prime Minister Modi to unveil a portrait of the late Chief Minister J. Jalalita in the State Legislative Assembly in July. The search for the Indian Air Force's Sukhoi 30 MKI fighter plane that went missing with two pilots in Assam is underway. The fighter jet was missing after taking off from Tezpur base during a routine training exercise on Tuesday. An IAF statement said that the plane was part of a two aircraft formation. A special CBI court on Wednesday granted bail to former Shiv Sena MP Satish Pradhan, the sixth accused in the Babri Masjid demolition case. The bail was granted on a surety of 20,000 rupees and a personal bond of the same amount. The court began day-to-day -day hearing in the politically sensitive case from May 20th and has already granted bail to five VHP leaders named as accused. The Supreme Court on Wednesday set May 29th as the next date to hear the petition regarding the extension of deadline for moving liquor stocks out of Bihar. This comes after several liquor manufacturers approached at the apex court seeking an extension of the May 31st deadline to move the liquor stocks. Earlier, the top court refused to extend licenses of liquor companies in Bihar. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. People from your party are going and joining the BJP. What is stopping the party from arresting this kind of a trend? It's not as if the whole party has gone to them. Ramchan Guha, after UP elections, or a, a little later, had said that Rahul Gandhi is almost like a serial failure. I don't think you can put the blame of the recent failures of the Congress Party at the doorstep of an individual. Who will be the credible al alternative for Modi? Time will tell. There's nothing called a vacuum in politics. Watch to the point with senior Congress leader and Rajya Sabha MP Kapil Sibyl only on Rajya Sabha television. Situated at a height of 3,048 meters, the town of Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh is claimed by both India and China. It was historically a part of Tibet, inhabited by the Moon Pass. The Tawang Monastery in the town is the largest Buddhist monastery in India. It was inspired by the fifth Dalai Lama, Gawang Lopsang Gyatso, and was built in 1681 by Merit Lama Lotre Gyatso. Tawang Monastery stands on top of the mountain, 10,000 feet above sea level, also known as the Golden Namgyal Latse. The centerpiece of the three-storied monastery is a massive, richly adorned statue of Lord Buddha, whose benign presence blesses one and all. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. refuge of the Asiatic lion. 
The National Park comprises 1,412 square kilometers of deciduous forest interspersed with semi-evergreen and evergreen flora, acacia, scrub jungle, grasslands and rocky hills. It's fed by large water bodies and the Kamleshwar Dam. Gir has about 400 lions and 300 leopards, making it one of the major big cat concentrations in India. You can explore them in their natural habitat to tiny wild birds, not seen easily but heard singing in the forest canopy, to crocodiles floating in the marsh waters. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, a day after the Indian Army destroyed a Pakistani army post in the Naushera sector of Jammu and Kashmir, the Pakistani media claimed its army flew fighter jets near the Siachen Glacier today. The media also reported that all Pakistani Air Force forward operating bases had been made operational after a visit by Pakistan's Air Chief Marshal Sohail Amman at the Qadri Air Base in Skardu. However, the Indian Air Force has denied any violation of India's airspace. Let's now move on and bring you news from the UK, where a day after the Manchester attack, the terror threat level in the country is now up to its highest level of critical. British Prime Minister Theresa May said that uh, there was an imminent threat of more such attacks. The British Home Secretary said that the 22-year-old suicide bomber Salman Abedi is likely to have not acted alone. Three people have been arrested so far over Monday's explosion. Britain raised its security alert level from severe to critical after the deadly bombing in Manchester on Monday night that left 22 people dead. British Prime Minister Theresa May made the announcement in a televised address late on Tuesday, warning that more such attacks were imminent. May said soldiers will be deployed on streets to boost security. It is now concluded on the basis of today's investigations that the threat level should be increased for the time being, from severe to critical. This means that their assessment is not only that an attack remains highly likely, but that a further attack may be imminent. Police arrested three men in South Manchester over the explosion. The police named 22-year-old Salman Abedi as the suicide bomber. His 23-year-old brother was also arrested on Tuesday. Investigators believe it was unlikely Abedi acted alone. One of the things the public will see, potentially, depending on obviously where they live, is that through Operation Tempera, this now allows the police to access support from the military. So they may see uh, certain amounts of military presence, which will be in areas to keep them safe. The highest level of security threat will mean soldiers will patrol streets and security is strengthened at key sites. Military personnel will be deployed at public events like concerts and sports events. There are many big events across the country over the next couple of weeks. We're going to be working really closely with the organisers to review the security, review their stewarding arrangements, review our policing arrangements, and make sure decisions are taken that events only go ahead when it's sens sensible and safe to do so. On Tuesday, floral tributes were paid to victims across Britain, while people expressed condolences to the victims and the bereaved families. We'll stand united. Everybody will stand united against the terrorists. I mean, they're evil people, and I think that's the only way you'll win or the world will win, is by everybody standing together. And the world standing together, not just Manchester, not just England, the whole world. We've got to stand together. The Westminster Palace was closed to public until further notice. UK has been submerged in grief after the suicide attack on Monday that targeted thousands of people who were heading out of Manchester Arena at the end of US artist Ariana Grande's performance. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, after the Manchester attack, the Board of Control for Cricket in India has raised concern with the ICC about the Indian team security in England, which is set to host the ICC Champions Trophy in a matter of few days. The BCCI has sent a letter to the ICC after the Manchester attack. The BCCI also called an emergency meeting where the complete tour schedule of India, including practice sessions, was reviewed. The ICC was quick to respond and stressed there was no change in India's plans. While expressing grief over the horrific incident, the international cricket body assured that security will be the main concern and they will review all the security arrangements made for the sporting event. 
The ICC Champions Trophy commences on June 1st and India's first game is on June 4th against arch-rivals Pakistan. The 15-member squad is set to depart for England today. Well, U.S. President Donald Trump met uh, with the Pope Francis at the Vatican on Wednesday. Trump was accompanied by his wife, daughter and son-in-law apart from other officials and has a quick meeting with the Pope before exchanging gifts. The pair's uh, meeting uh, offered no hint of the rocky start to their relationship last year when the Pope questioned then-presidential candidate Trump's Christian credentials. After the Vatican, Trump headed to a uh, Quirinale Palace in Rome to meet Italian President Sergio Mattarella. Trump also met Prime Minister Paolo Gentiloni later in the day. Meanwhile, Brussels is preparing to host a NATO meeting on Thursday and to welcome United States President Donald Trump as part of his first overseas visit. The meeting is choreographed to impress a U.S. president who had earlier called the Western alliance obsolete. Trump and his entourage will reach Brussels later today and he will meet the Belgian king and queen, EU leaders and his NATO ally counterparts. I welcome yesterday's U.S. budget proposal to significantly further increase the U.S. presence in Europe with more troops, infrastructure and exercises. I welcome this strong sign of U.S. continued commitment to NATO and to European security. NATO is adapting to deter any possible aggression and preserve the peace. At the same time, we have delivered on our commitment to dialogue with Russia, with four meetings of the NATO-Russia Council in the last year. So we are delivering on both tracks of defense and dialogue. A retired inspector general of the CRPF was denied entry into Canada on Tuesday with airport authorities at Vancouver saying that the parliament or paramilitary force in which he worked had committed human rights violations. Tejinder Singh Dillon had landed in Canada with his wife on the 18th of May and was put on the return flight to India on May 20th after being declared inadmissible under Canada's Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. His wife was, however, allowed to proceed to her destination in Canada. India voiced its protest and said that it had taken up the matter with the Canadian government and that the characterization of a reputed force like the CRPF is completely unacceptable. Later, in a statement aimed at pacifying the Indian side, Canadian High Commissioner to India, Nadir Patel, said... In this case, the language in the document does not reflect the Government of Canada's policy toward India or any particular organization, including the Central Reserve Police Force of India. The Central Reserve Police Force plays an important role in upholding law and order in India. Well, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte has declared uh, martial law on the southern island of Mindanao after clashes between the army and militants linked to Islamic State. Martial law has been declared for 60 days and will allow the use of the military to enforce law and uh, the detention of people without charge for long periods. The violence in Marawi city in Mindanao erupted on Tuesday as the army searched for the leader of a militant group that had pledged allegiance to Islamic State. The violence left three members of the security forces dead. Mindanao is home to a number of Muslim rebel groups seeking more autonomy. Duterte made the announcement during a visit to Russia, which he was forced to cut short. During his talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Duterte also said that the Philippines needed more modern weapons to fight Islamic State militants and other militant groups. Something happened there in Mindanao. ISIS uh, occupied a province and there is still fighting going on. I have to go home because uh, I should be there at this time. It's an urgent matter that the people should be there at this time. The president has called me and asked me to announce that as of 10 p.m. Manila time, he has already declared martial law for the entire island of Mindanao. As Des Guevara has clarified, 
that this is possible on the grounds of existence of the union because of what is happening in Mindanao. The presence of the president, the physical presence is needed in the Philippines. That is the president's assessment. And his priority is always the protection of each and every uh, Filipino. Mm -hmm. He will act uh, within the framework of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We will follow all rules and uh, regulations. Well, here's a roundup of the other international news and global buzz. Six miners died and five were rescued from a flooded coal mine in North China. In flooding on Monday, 11 miners were trapped in a pit in the Dongyu coal mine. The five survivors were hospitalized. The rescue operation ended on Wednesday. Former Health Minister and Finance Minister of Ethiopia, Tedros Adhomom, was elected as the new Director General of the WHO on Tuesday. The election held at the ongoing 70th World Health Assembly in Geneva, Switzerland. Adhanom will succeed Margaret Chang and will begin his five-year term on July 1st. Several people were injured and displaced in the US after a tornado hit North Carolina on Tuesday. Meteorologists gave a tornado warning moments before the twister hit Tuesday evening. NOAA's Storm Prediction Center said that a tornado watch is in effect in Georgia, South Carolina and North Northern Florida. Canada has said that Ottawa will renegotiate NAFTA in the country's favour after Washington insisted to renegotiate the free trade deal. US President Trump said last week that uh, they will leave the North American free trade agreement if it will not be renewed in favour of US workers. At least 13 people were killed in an explosion in North China on Wednesday. Blast took after a vehicle carrying chemicals exploded in a tunnel. Nine vehicles, including one carrying hazardous chemicals and five carrying coal, were damaged. The blast also damaged 43 houses in a nearby village. But here's a roundup of some sports news now in Sports Beat. Indian off-spinner Ravi Chandran Ashwin won the International Cricketer of the Year Award at the SEAT Cricket Rating International Awards 2017. The award was presented by former Indian skipper Sunil Gavaskar and chairman of the RPG Enterprises Harsh Goenka. Ashwin was the key player during the home season where India won 10 of the 13 tests they played against New Zealand, England, Bangladesh and Australia. Ashwin took 99 wickets in the past 12 months. Well, that's it on this newscast. Have a good evening.